Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a really nice little portable 4K monitor that supports touch. This is known as the GMK KD1. On my channel, I've actually taken a look at a few of these portable monitors, but all of them have really come in at 1080p. Now this one here is sitting at a 4K resolution with HDR, and it's a 14-inch touch panel, up to 10 points of touch here. We do have mini HDMI and USB Type-C for video in. A 60 hertz refresh rate, and since we're at that 4K resolution, it's got a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Dual stereo speakers. Like I mentioned, we do have Type-C for video in or power in. There's two Type-C ports here, one mini HDMI port, one micro USB port for OTG if you have a device connected to this that supports data and video over Type-C. It also has a built-in 3.5 millimeter audio jack, and inside of the box you're also going to receive your power supply, USB Type-C cable, your OTG cable, and a mini HDMI to full-size HDMI cable. I'm a big fan of these portable monitors, especially the ones with built-in touch, because I'm actually a big user of Samsung DeX. And in this video, we're going to test this out with a bunch of different devices. We'll go with the mini PC, the Switch, Series S, laptop, and the Samsung Galaxy S21. One thing I really like about this monitor and the way they've set this up is the built-in kickstand. Now this has all of our I.O. included, and usually when you get a portable monitor, it comes with some kind of kickstand, foldable folio stand. And to tell you the truth, I kind of get annoyed by setting those up, so this is just a foldable stand that's directly attached to the monitor itself, which does make it a bit thicker at the bottom, but I can definitely overlook this given the easy access of it. The first device I wanted to test with this monitor was a mini PC. Now this one here is just a little Ryzen powered mini PC and it does support display and data over USB Type-C. So with something like this or a newer laptop with USB Type-C built in, all you'll need is one cable. The single cable from that USB Type-C port is going to send video, power, and data over to the monitor. And speaking of the power to the monitor, this runs on 5 volts, so yes it will run off a battery and we'll take a look at that in a second. But when it comes to the OSD, since this is a touch display, we can control the OSD with the touch. This does have HDR built in, and I do have it enabled. We have all the basic functions, brightness, volume, you can change the color tone, switch inputs, and there's also a few presets built in, like game mode, movie, I mean your basic display settings that you'll find on most any display nowadays. This does have 10 points of touch built in, and the touch functionality will only work with devices that support it. So if you do plug in an Xbox or a Nintendo Switch, you're not going to get that touch functionality. But from a PC, a single board computer, or even your Android phone, it'll work just fine. We do have those dual stereo speakers built in. There's not much bass here, and I could use a little more sound out of this, but they have included that 3.5mm audio jack on the side here, so if you wanted to plug in some headphones or an extra set of speakers, you could. No problem at all. But when it comes to the video quality, what we have here is a 4K 60fps HDR video running on YouTube and it looks absolutely amazing on this little display. It's an IPS panel and with HDR enabled, as you can see, we have some really, really deep blacks. One of the main use case scenarios I think a lot of people would use these for is a secondary display for their laptop. So I've just pulled out my little gaming laptop here, this is my main top. Uh, you can go HDMI to this little monitor because we do have HDMI, but this supports display over USB Type-C. So again, all I need is one cable from my laptop to the display to get data, touch, and power to that display. Right now, it's mirroring the display, but I mean, as a lot of us already know, we can set this up as an extended display if you want to. And touch will work with Windows and Linux. I'm actually not sure about Mac. I don't know if they have any kind of touch support built in. But this does work amazingly as a secondary display, whether you're using HDMI or USB Type-C. Another thing a lot of people might want to use one of these for is a portable display for your console. I have a Series S here. I've just got power from USB on the Series S going directly to the monitor and HDMI. Like I mentioned, unfortunately we're not going to get any kind of touch and that's really not due to the monitor itself, it's due to the manufacturer of the console. None of these that I've ever tested will support touch. But it does look really good here. I mean, even though it's a 14 inch display, if you needed to carry this with you with a smaller console like the Series S, it's going to work out just fine. I do have HDR enabled on the display and the Xbox itself, and in order to power this, I'm just using one of the free USB ports on the Series S. So if this was to go portable, let's say you were at a hotel, all you'll need to do is plug the Xbox into the wall to get power to that. So far, with all of my tests, we've been powering this monitor from the device we're using with it. Now, you could do that with the Switch if you want to use the dock and use one of the free USB ports in here, plug it into power on the monitor. 
it's going to send that 5 volts over. But if you want to go real portable with it, you can always use an external battery pack. This is a 5 volt, 10,000 milliamp hour battery pack I picked up from Walmart about a year ago. It's just one of the phone charger battery banks, and now that I have power going to the monitor, I can plug my switch right in. Because unfortunately, the switch isn't going to send power to that monitor. We will need some kind of external power like this battery. But as soon as it connects over, it's going to actually start charging the switch and power the monitor from that battery pack. And as you can see, we have the switch displaying on this little 4K display. It's not going to do 4K because the switch doesn't output 4K, but it still looks really good on this 14-inch IPS display. And with everything being powered by that battery bank, this is a fully portable setup. I mean, you could basically bring this anywhere. All of this would fit into a backpack. But again, even with the Switch, even though the Switch has a built-in touchscreen, it doesn't support touch over USB Type-C. So even though we have a touch monitor here, it's just not going to work with these consoles. But when it comes down to it, my main use case scenario out of a monitor like this is with my Android device, specifically my Samsung devices that support DeX. It's going to start charging my device, and this will work over a battery pack also. But as you can see, DeX is more of a desktop style interface, and it's really suited for these larger displays. But if for some reason you just needed to use regular Android on the external display, it's going to work, and touch is also functional over USB Type-C. Personally, when I connect these to a bigger screen, I prefer using DeX. But DeX is more suited for a keyboard and mouse, and if you had a Bluetooth mouse and keyboard setup, you could connect it directly to your phone. But if you don't have something like that and you just have something with the 2.4 GHz dongle, like a wireless keyboard and mouse setup here from Logitech, you can use the built-in OTG port on the monitor. It does come with this USB adapter. I kind of wish it was a full-size port so I could just plug it right into the side, but unfortunately it's not here. But it does work over that USB Type-C connection. So we have the mouse and keyboard connected through the monitor, and it's feeding that information directly to the phone. So we can use this with DeX or our basic Android operating system. And one of my favorite things to do on these portable setups is emulation. Got an Xbox One controller connected over Bluetooth to the phone itself. We have some PSP emulation going here. And if you just wanted to play a native Android game that supports touch or controllers, you can do it on this monitor. It doesn't have to be emulation. This is just something I personally really like to do. In the end, I'm actually really enjoying the GMK KD-1. This is a great little monitor. I do wish it would get a bit louder. If they would have added quad speakers here, it would have sounded a bit better. It does get kind of tinny, given that we only have those two 1-watt speakers built in. But it will get you by, and they did add that 3.5mm audio jack for a reason. I love the fact that we can connect this to basically any device as long as we have HDMI or display over USB Type-C. It's thin, light, portable, and it can be battery powered because it only runs on 5 volts. Another thing that I noticed is it does support quick charge over the USB Type-C connectors. The included power supply is a quick charge brick, so while I had my Samsung device plugged in, it was doing some quick charging through the monitor. So if you've been in the market for a portable 4K touch display, I would definitely take a look at the GMK KD-1. Now you can always get out a lot cheaper by not going the touch route, but uh, some people might really enjoy having this set up on their phone with touch enabled, or even adding touch functionality to their PC or laptop. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in learning more about this little display, I will leave some links in the description. But like always, thanks for watching.